Hey everyone, Todd from Sideshow Effects once again, and in this video I'm going to go over the installation process of our DaVinci color panel for Mac systems. Now once you've downloaded our pack, you, you might want to, we have a little folder here called Start Here, uh, and this introduces you to our uh, Quick Start Guide, which goes over the same processes I'm going to show you in this video. In addition, in the pack, there is a comprehensive guide, and this is a uh, even more detailed PDF. We cover every single parameter individually of uh, how it would be uh, presented and programmed. So we'll get to programming in a minute, but first of all, we have a couple things that we need to install. And the first is uh, our keyboard shortcuts. So to install those keyboard shortcuts, We'll go into DaVinci itself and we will go to the keyboard customization. And we're going to go to the top ellipse here and we'll select import preset. You will navigate to the folder that you downloaded from Sideshow FX and navigate to the key command folder and inside is this text folder. And this is what you would import into DaVinci. I already have it loaded here. So I'm not going to do it in, on this step. I'll just close this out. The next step is this pack works in conjunction with the amazing software program Keyboard Maestro, which makes a lot of this stuff work. So you will need to have uh, a, your own licensed copy of Keyboard Maestro. And if you don't have one, you can head over to keyboardmaestro.com and you can uh, download the free trial. But for long-term use, of course, you're gonna have to purchase this. And we have a, um, a discount code in the PDF itself that uh, will get you 20% uh, off the, the cost of, of Keyboard Maestro. So you launch Keyboard Maestro, and what you will need to do is then go to File, Import, and you're gonna to import to Macro Library. And this is a library file that we've created. It's inside of your downloaded folder once again and under the KM macro folder. And this is it here, Sideshow FX Color Panel Macros. And it's a KM library file. So you'd select that to import that. I'm not going to select it because I already have it. And it will show up in the macro library here. At the bottom of the library pane is an insert button. And you can click that and it will automatically insert and enable the library. Alternatively, you can double click the library file double click this to launch it into the keyboard maestro editor and once you do it shows up here under sideshow effects color panel and you may find that when you launch it into the maestro editor that enable macro group is turned off so it's not going to work until you select this checkbox and once you do it's now enabled the only other thing to do here in keyboard maestro is double check and make sure that the Keyboard Maestro engine is running. And you do that by going to the File menu in Keyboard Maestro and go down here. And if it's running, it will say Quit Engine. In this case, it isn't running. So I will uh, start the engine by saying Launch Engine. And now it's running. See, now when we go to File, it shows Quit Engine, which indicates that it is working. Now the next thing to do is we're going to launch Loop Deck itself and we're going to import the uh, Loop Deck profile that we've created. So you click on the main profile, go to Import Profile, and you would navigate to, once again, the folder you downloaded from, the pack you downloaded from Sideshow FX, and in the Loop Deck Profile folder is the color panel for DaVinci Resolve Mac version. You would select that profile, and it would import and it will come up with the dialog box asking you what application you want to associate with this profile with obviously it's DaVinci Resolve and you can either leave the name or you can change it to whatever you like and then we would say okay now I've already got it loaded here so I'm not going to do a second installation of this once installed it will appear like this now once this is imported one of the other things you need to do is Go up here to the top right, and we're going to, uh, on this drop down, we're going to go to device settings, and we're going to go into device configuration and make sure that we have MIDI on. You may find it's off by default. Turn it on and say done. 
And then one other thing, just to double check, you make sure that you have MIDI here. And in the, um, in the settings, make sure that MIDI is viewed. You don't want to hide the plugin, you wanna make sure that it is active. And so once that's done, the uh, profile is ready to be programmed. Now you need to program it for your own specific workstation because everybody's workstation is always a little bit different. And what we're going to be doing is recording X, Y coordinates of your mouse position for all the different color parameters in DaVinci. Once you start getting into the swing of it, it can go very quickly, but I'm going to be very detailed so that there is minimal confusion as to what you need to do and where you need to place your mouse. Now I'll be demonstrating the programming on my uh, LoopDeck CT device. This color panel pack works on the live device as well. The only difference is, of course, you don't get the shuttle wheel and you don't have the, uh, the, the square keys. And there is a, a slight difference in how the numbering works on the live device. On the CT, it goes from uh, 1 to 8. On the live device, it uh, has a main key, and then it goes one, uh, from 1 to 7. So in the programming of this, I indicate uh, the use of the 7 and 8 keys for moving forwards and backwards. On the live device, it's the 6 and 7 key. And the key binding button on the CT, I refer to as, as key binding uh, round button 6, is actually the round button 5 on the live device. So the first thing you want to do, you'll see on our main page, we have an activate button on the top right here. So let's go into DaVinci and with DaVinci open, we'll press activate and you'll see you get a quick little overlay indicating that the Sideshow FX panel has been activated. This now makes the uh, looped at color panel live for us. If ever you find that the buttons aren't responding, that is the first place you go to to do it as a troubleshoot. Hit the activate button, make sure that the panel is active. Now, before we can record any mouse positions, what you'll need to do, the first step is go to your workspace and you wanna reset the UI layout. This will just reset everything into a standardized setup for you to work with. What we want to do is make sure that everything below our timeline here is going to stay in the same position. If it moves after we have programmed our mouse position, obviously our mouse position is going to be off. So you need to make sure that whatever however you are planning on working is going to stay the same. Now some things that will change the layout of your uh, DaVinci interface can be Let's say you go into, we'll go into uh, DaVinci Resolve, uh, sorry, go into uh, Project Settings, and you'll see that we can enable or disable uh, Dolby Vision, HDR10 Plus, and HDR Vivid. Now, if you see over here on the, on the left-hand side here, uh, these panes here, you see I've got Dolby Vision selected because I'm gonna demonstrate how to uh, program Dolby Vision but I don't have HDR10 plus or Vivid. And I want to turn these on. And then when I, I, I'm trying to get this out of the way here. When I say save, and those will come on, and these headings here will all shift down. So take a look at that. When I say save, you see they shifted down. They've been added and they shifted this bank down. So if I had already programmed uh, my curves header, over here where it originally was, and then I go to press curves, it's going to press in this location and it's not there anymore, it's down here. So I'm saying this just to uh, have you plan ahead of time how you like to work. If you never work with these, let's take them out. Just remove those, say save again and we'll work with it in this position. I'll leave Dolby Vision on if you don't Work with Dolby Vision, you can have that off however you choose to work. Now, if you decide that in a later project you want to use one of these extended modes, you just need to reprogram this set here. Not a big deal, and you'll see in a minute how quick it is to do this. So this is the setup we're going to go with. This is the setup we're going to start programming with. Now in terms of programming, 
For those of you who are really familiar with uh, DaVinci and really familiar with loop deck devices and you just want the very, very short, quick version of what I'm going to be demonstrating here, here it is. So you press number six on the loop deck device, navigate to the workspace you want to work in, for example, primaries, position your mouse over the parameter that you want to target, in this case temperature, on your loop deck device, press the temperature key. You will hear a tone. That position has now been recorded. Now when you go back out to the main page of our color panel and you go into the primaries workspace and you press the temperature key, you can now use the horizontal dial or if you have the CT device, the shuttle wheel set to the horizontal section and rotate that and your temperature will now raise up or down depending on the direction you turn the dial. It's just positioning your mouse over the correct parameter and pressing the correct parameter in the keybind section of our color panel on your device. You don't have to program everything in DaVinci. You can just program the ones you want to use. Let's say, for example, you never use the log controls. You don't need to program them. You only need to program what you want to use. If you find at a later date that you start using log and you want to program those, hop into Keybind, position your mouse over all the parameters, Keybind them, you're done. And you never have to do it again. These settings will always be saved. So that's the real quick and short version of what it is we're doing here with the programming. It goes by very quickly once you get into the rhythm of it. Now if you need a more comprehensive tutorial on all of the programming with our DaVinci Color Panel, Check the link below for our comprehensive installation video, and that will take you through step by step on every single parameter that we've got available in our color panel pack. So maybe start with what you've been shown already in this video, and if you are a little unsure at any following stage, check out the comprehensive video, scan to that chapter, and you can use it as a reference guide for where your mouse needs to go. So make sure you check out some of the links below for some videos we've put together that give you a quick demonstration in the different workspaces of how our color panel for Loop Deck can speed up your color grading process. Thanks for watching. Until next time, we'll talk to you soon.